Hi guys, welcome back to Casting Commons, the show where we talk, discuss everything proper. I'm your host, Teasdale, and this is my co-host, the Lembath for Second Breakfast man himself, Race. Hello. So, Paul, what have you been up to this week? Now we're back to normal. Um, yeah, back to a bit of normality. Um, playing some leagues with Cold Dorther again, and um, working on a bit of a sort of less all-in Cold Dorther list. Um, mm-hmm. So cutting some of the two mana draw two. So I think that's although they're nice to have eight. I feel like eight's just been too clumpy, and it's probably been one of the reasons Burns just not done as well as it probably should have. Like that everyone just falls mm-hmm. an eight, and it's probably not correct. Um, so yeah, working on a cold offer build with that. Um, played a few leagues, leagues are still in a pretty rough state. They're not, they're not the greatest to play at the moment, but um, did did fairly well. Um, and then looking at the some of the results from the challenges, I might change it and try um, some clubs, some improvised mm-hmm. clubs in there as well. What yeah, about yourself? I think. Uh... Touching on before I move on, I guess, yeah. I think we have spoke about before that Cold Author and Red in general probably doesn't want eight. It just takes someone to make the initiative of going down. Yeah. But because it does have power behind the eight, obviously there's some games where you'll just chain and go nuts, but overall eight does seem too many and probably too clunky. So yeah, yeah it'd be uh, interesting to see how the uh, five or six or whatever you end up on goes, how that goes, to be fair. Yeah, it'll be between eight and five, I would say. But yeah, got moving on, uh, obviously. So I've just recorded new cards. You know, it's it's hype time. It's just all about testing new new interactions, new cards. Main, my main ones I've touched on as uh, just getting back to normality, obviously. Um, it's mainly been Lembas and Cass into the fire, the two obvious standout cards. Um, I put Lembas and Cass into the fire in Jeskai Affinity, which I've played for quite a while. And that was pretty cool. That video should be out mm. next week. Um, deck's surprisingly strong. It's basically Boros, but with blue cards. So yeah. um, Boros with thought cards. Yeah. And Kenku, which yeah. is pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really impressed us. So yeah, be definitely cool to see. Hopefully, more development out of that in the in the future. I've got some cool ones I'm working on, um, but we'll see how that goes. Anyways, that's the Boros stuff out the way. Um, <laughs> Like, well, actually, maybe it isn't. Let's go on to the challenges from the weekend just gone, I guess. But, yeah. yeah. Would you like to touch on news, I guess, first, or challenges? I'm easy. Yeah, yeah, may as well go for the sort of news, sort of yeah. not news anymore now. Yeah, so we were going to touch on this. We mentioned we were going to touch on this anyways when, when it was first announced. Uh, that basically, Pauper League structure was about to change. It was going from a hundred player point entry to sixty player point entry with equivalent prizes. Where in terms of equivalent, it was more equivalent in terms of three twos. I believe the four ones and the five ones weren't didn't equate either. Yeah, so it was basically the you pay less in, but if you four four one or five or you'll get less prizes than you do. Yeah, it did. Yeah, um, more in line with a sixty player point entry than a hundred player point entry. Yeah. Um, but the idea was obviously, I'm assuming, w- was to make it white, like easier for a lot of people. As Pauper is a relatively cheap format, you know, making the entry to entry barrier to it is also less. It would have been pretty cool to see. Um, it might have altered. There is a chance that it might have altered the fun factor of leagues as well. I guess because there's less sort of payout, so more likely grinders would have played potentially something else. And then also you get people who are just there to have fun and all that sort of stuff. And you get less um, mono red or quick win decks, which is currently happening in leagues. There's a lot of mono blue, a lot of mono red, a lot of like those sort Mm. of easy decks to play. And it would have been interesting to see if it changed, I think. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, really, because they sort of want to lower the entry point. But to like... To me, a hundred pl- the difference between a hundred player points and sixty player points isn't really that big. No. Um, if if they want to make entry into Pauper easier, they can easily do that. Like they mm. can just put different things on or put more events on. Like more people will play Pauper if there's more reason to play Pauper. Mm-hmm. 
where sort of removing that reason is a bit of a sort of a weird idea, I thought. But it, it might have been interesting to see. Obviously, they've backtracked on that now. They've just said, oh, we're not going to do it anymore. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of the the main, well, a lot of the people that play for but basically every week mm-hmm. on Magic Online said, this isn't very good for us at all. Because mm-hmm. they, they basically having to play a lot more games to mm-hmm. sort of net the equivalent. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Like you said, the might if, if the cost is lower, it might make it more casual and less people playing like your mono red, your mono blue. But it might also go the other way, where it's now you have to play more leagues to net that value. Exactly. So more people play mono red to fit in more leagues. For sure. Um... But yeah, ultimately, it's, it's not happening this time. They might revisit in the future. I think... Um but I, yeah, I think there's better ways to make Pauper more accessible on Magic Online if that is the goal. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think it would have been interesting to at least test it for a, a short season. I wouldn't yeah. have been against it with the idea of basically saying, look, we're gonna we're gonna implement this and then we're gonna reverse it after this this league season's over. But it's just to, to test test the waters because yeah. to see what happens, because it might fix the league issues, it might make them worse. But then ultimately also it might just make the reasons for say um people like the different people who just join the leagues for content like myself or just play to have a great pauper experience might just end up playing tournament practice and then you'll mm. kind of loot because all these grinders have left. There's no stakes to play a pauper yeah. league anymore. So what's the point? I might as well just play tournament practice for actually no cost at all. Yeah. So it'd have been interesting to just kind of test the waters there. And maybe shorten the season or something, but yeah. Um, with the with the hard constraint of this is how it's going to be in the future, I I do agree with ultimately turning it back to how it origin how it originally is. Yeah, I think the way they put it across as well sort of wasn't the best idea to not get everyone to go against it immediately. They just mm. sort of said, right, we're doing this. Yeah. With no time scale or anything, it was just sort of a we're not testing this. We're just going to do it. Mm. Um which will obviously put people off. Like, if they said, oh, we're going to do this for two weeks to see what it's like, mm. or even a month, like, you would have probably got less of a a, p- a poor reaction to the announcement. Definitely. Um, I think one thing I've seen as well, with the sort of same idea in mind of making pop more accessible, was, I can't remember, it, it might have been Dan saying it on, on Twitter, was about putting or open the amount or putting more of the higher value of pauper cards into treasure chests mm. to like up the circulation a bit so like your lot spells like your um initiative guys the two five man initiative guys and mm-hmm. um, like board parties and such and um, the stuff that is actually making pauper less accessible and mm-hmm. if you reduce the cost of that it's going to make pauper more accessible for sure for sure so yeah that that was basically the news that that's the only news section we had um, any more other news that comes up I guess we'll try and look at keep on top of it, keep people informed but I guess now let's move on to the challenges if you're alright with that yeah yeah um, pretty <laughs> pretty boring challenges I'm going to say this week they the weren't the most exciting um, so we'll start with Saturday, Saturday 24th um, first place was Blue Black Terror second mm-hmm. place was Affinity uh, third was third and fourth was blue black terror mono blue fear, and then fifth through eighth was white weenie two more mono blue fears and a boros synth, and then the the near misses on the top eight ninth was another blue black terror, and then tenth was ponza. Um, so a week where we've got that resurgence of blue black terror again. Um, it's sort of one of those decks that is nowhere then absolutely dominates then it's nowhere then absolutely dominates um yeah it always seems to come in in peaks and troughs like that but, um, like, but yeah i feel like terror's like the dredge of pauper it kind of <laughs> yeah. just like it, it's nowhere to really be seen or just absolutely terrible when it is seen like that and then it's just like okay everyone forgets it's like everyone's left the relic of projectors at home and it's like okay let's go and then it just tears up like yeah when I initially looked, I was like, oh, sweet. They've got, like, you know, it's done really well. They've got new toys, obviously. Uh, the first place list ran went to 15 lands, I believe, mm. and ran just four ice tunnels or one of the blue-black lands and then ran 
for Lorien revealed as like an Ash Baron, but it also increased the spell count kind of thing. Really sweet, cool, cool way of doing it. And I was like, oh great, they've got look at the top eight. I was like, oh great, we've we've got new toys. It's it's done really well. And then the other the fourth place list just bog standard terror. Yeah. It's just like, all right, okay. It's it's just actually put his lands back in. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's just one of them weeks. Then it's just the terror week. Yeah, the it is interesting seeing the the impact the new cards are having. They are obviously there's a few different cards being mm-hmm. played. The the Lorien revealed in terror is one that's particularly interesting being able to cut down on so many lands Mm -hmm. while also essentially making your ash baron spells in the graveyard for reducing your terrors and Mm -hmm. being five drop draw threes when you run out of gas um it's it's really cool um it'll be interesting obviously as you say the the fourth place the third fourth place doesn't run any and then the first place runs um four so Mm -hmm. It, it'll be interesting to see which one catches on, but hopefully it'll be the the Lorien revealed one because it is it's a bit cool, a bit more interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I, I think the uh, yeah, I definitely think that sort of the way these one mana cyclers are, it's it, it's surprisingly interesting. Like don't worry, I, I I thought about Lorien revealed in specifically in Terror, not really as replacing the lands though, just more of like yeah. You know, generally a fine spell. It's a spell that helps you get your land drops and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the more I see content creators and players playing with these cards and replacing the the lands and treating them as like Ash Barons that are spells, mm. is it's a really cool way and it's really ex- hopefully exciting to see how the actual cycle will actually impact. Obviously, I think yeah. the Lorien is the most powerful one because it's a really powerful effect, generally and also is. Um, yeah, I think that obviously the main boon is the sort of weird low spell effect that it gives to your your terrors. I think mm-hmm. if there's something that makes the other ones have like a, a use in the yard as well, mm-hmm. they'll probably start to pick up a bit. Um, obviously, that's the biggest one being a spell. Um, there's obviously a, a, there's a lot of mono blue in this top eight as well, mm-hmm. and there wasn't actually that much played. Mm-hmm. Just pretty much 50% of what was played top 8 <laughs> yeah so maybe just a good week for Mono Blue as well yeah it seems like everyone left the relics and the red elemental blasts at home clearly <laughs> yeah I, I guess with how well the terror decks were doing mm. yeah it maybe makes Mono Blue feel a bit better um, because they don't have to worry about all them pyros and revs and end the festivities coming in yeah it is not one because I expected a lot of, not necessarily Boros, but I expected a lot of Cast Into the Fire, for sure, yeah. to feature in the top eight, which then, in a roundabout way to me, makes fairies worse. But yeah. it's just, like, not the case at all. Like, <laughs> I did the, the only deck that could play Cast Into the Fire, the Affinity deck, did it even play it? Um, oh, the, in the top eight, isn't it? Yeah. It ran two in the sideboard and three red elemental yeah. blasts. Did run breath weapons as well. Run breath um, weapons. But, but yeah, not as heavy as we really expected. Like I expected mm. a lot of decks just well, the mono red decks in particular just jamming four, um, cast into the fires in the board. Mm. I think the Boros deck that come tenth. Did it come tenth? Oh, it came eighth. The Boros deck I came eighth as well. That ran three. Three in the main. I I missed the. Uh... Oh, the but yeah. The, sorry, the the fifth or eighth bar sim, and mm. um, that ran three in the main. And uh, did it run one in the side? Yeah, one in the side. So it has got the full, the full set. Um, but then, I, I'm assuming he just maybe played played against White Weenie or <laughs> or Terror or something, and they just weren't very good. Because mm. that sort of looked like a. A pretty stacked topic for that deck to do well with the triple mono blue fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, I I haven't really tested the obviously the ins and outs of Boros versus Terra, but it looks like it could be a pretty poor matchup to be fair. Similar to yeah. it has similar hit I imagine like the unexpected fans um that they generally use would fix a lot of their issues. Like you got all the removal for the flyers. And then the, the fangs kind of effects just fix the rest of it. Like, you can't get I, burnt out. 
Yeah, I think that Boris list in particular, um, it doesn't run any journeys in the main either. So none of its removal spells answer a Terra in one hit or mm. an Angler in one hit. Um, you have to like gal blast it and then ping it or or double bolt it. Mm-hmm. So I kind of I, I imagine that made it a bit worse. Um, it does have four relics in the board, but sometimes they're just not enough. Yeah, definitely. Oh, but yeah, not not as much Boros. Obviously, one one sneaking into the top eight, but just one in the in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, I expected probably two or three. Um, I don't even know how highly the next one placed. I think it was quite low down, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, it was very low down because I've been rolling for days. <laughs> yeah, it was 23rd. Um, so, yeah, uh, off a really good weekend at Pop again, but just not not performing on Mordor. Yeah, may- maybe they've managed to adapt. You know, mm. maybe that quickly, like in all these leagues and stuff like that. But to be fair, I personally haven't seen many of them in leagues. I think I've asked mm. one of the four or five leagues. So, um, yeah, it's definitely Could be maybe just a bit slow. People maybe just not picking it up yet. Yeah. Um, it might might see a bit more next week, possibly. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to talk about this top eight? No, I think it, there's, there's not that much to be said on it. Obviously, there's there's no mono red, which I yeah. guess is the main takeaway. There's still affinity, blue black terror, mono blue fear, and boros synth, and a tenth place ponza. There's basically the decks that you expect to see week mm. in week out. They've all made it there. The white weenie, I guess, is a bit of an outlier. Um. But yeah, just dom- dominated by Pon- um, Blue Black Terror and, and Fear with Affinity, doing Affinity things and just constantly top eight in every single league. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there, There's nothing really anything interesting about the uh, mono whitelist either. It's fairly um, stock. By yeah, the looks I wouldn't of it. say it wasn't interesting just because it is white wing. It's yeah. nice to see. But yeah, it's, it's a, what there's you not... would probably think of as a, a fairly stock white wing. Yeah. Um, no I guess they're playing, they're playing Ramosi and Rally instead of um, the extra Guardian's Pledges. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just like a free sort of little Guardian's Pledge. Um, yeah, apart, apart from that, it's fairly stock white weenie. Yeah. There's no, no Lord of the Rings spice making it in. No, but I guess obviously it's pretty, I imagine it's pretty well positioned with, it's got its own core sky fishers and then obviously a lot of it is in the air, so yeah. definitely fairly strong, obviously. I'm assuming Remorse in Rally again is a, probably a nod to the, all the casting at the fires uh, that they expected, Yeah, I would guess. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's um, fair, actually. But yeah, definitely, definitely a sweet one. Well, it's nice to see White Winnie because it is sort of a strongish deck that just sometimes it gets you, so it's nice to see. Um... But yeah, it's fairly stock. I, I just wish there was more Lord of the Rings spice for sure in this top eight. <laughs> um, I guess the only other thing that I noticed was one of the blue decks is running a one of Psychic Barrier in the main, oh, as yeah. well as yeah. as well as four preordains. Um, so it's a bit of a deviation from the standard mono blue, shall we say? Um, still got obviously the the fairy ninja package and. Uh, four spire golems, four the monsters. Um, but yeah, just run a bit of extra extra spice with four, four pre audience, one psychic barrier, one loose focus. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of like, psych, like the, the not the psychic barrier, because I definitely haven't seen psychic barrier in a long time, <laughs> but um, like the essence scattery exclude effects kind of making yeah. its way into like sideboards of like fans in particular. Um, and that seems to be like a nod against like a Vengeance Hunter y mid rangey decks. Like most of their mm-hmm. threats are, you know, it's just a great counter spell. And I'm guessing that's kind of where that stemmed from. And then. Yeah, it's just a, an essence scatter with a, a ping tacked on, isn't it? Yeah. Might matter. You and never know. Obviously, the mana cost is irrelevant. You're, you're 18 islands, so it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Um, and then I guess the lose focus again, if that is sort of a. Uh, Initiative here, the lose focus is also really good against those like Ponza decks that yeah, play in the initiative definitely. guys. So you can get the double tag on the on the cascade guys. Yeah. 
Good. Um, Pretty sweet. But yeah, there was no, um, I can't remember the card, but the sort of unexpected fans that makes an orc army mm. um, from Lord of the Rings. I thought we might see Terra trying that out, but sadly not. Yeah, I, I did like that card originally, but then it turns out I just misread it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a... Yeah, the, the only one turn lifelinks is a downside, but mm. I guess the upside against Edix is pretty big. But other than the mirror of Teradex, which you probably don't want the lifelink in that much anyway, you where there is no real edict. <laughs> yeah, I guess you've got yeah you've got like the likes of gardens and things like that. Mm. But I, I think there was was it is it today or uh, was it Saturday or Sunday? There was gardens. Sunday had the gardens uh, top garden. eight. All ah, right, so yeah, there was zero garden decks in the top thirty-two of Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Dexter. I don't actually, I don't think there was a chain as edict outside of Terror. the Terra decks. <laughs> oh, poor gardens. I know. Um, but yeah, that, that's it for me on Saturday. I don't know if you've got out else. No, no, definitely not. So if we uh, move on to Sunday the 25th, mm -hmm. um, this one was a bit more varied. Um, First place was Affinity, second place was Blue Black Terror, so I'm just swapping places from, from the Saturday. And um, third and fourth was a Gardens and a Jeskai Wildfire Ephemerate thing. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like I feel like I need to learn the name of this deck. <laughs> is it just called Jeskai Wildfire? Is that is that the normal name? That's what I call it. <laughs> um and then fifth through eighth was uh, another two blue black terrors, <laughs> a fans and a, a cold author red. Uh, and then the near misses was, was another Jess guy wildfire uh, and uh, another Boris Simph in town. Um, yeah. Yeah, sort of Terra still on a big high from the cider. Just back to back multiple copies in both top eights. Um, yeah. Did more of them move to, I guess, the one of the lists? I don't know which one it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's the. I think they were a bit mixed on um, Lorians. Um, mm. I know one ran four, and it basically copied the oh, the fifteen this. land yeah. sort of um, conglomeration. I think two of them actually did that. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, and I think was the other one just stuck. Yeah, the other one was just stuck. Um, no Lorians in eighteen lands. An interesting like divide to be fair it's very strange like obviously the success of both is still doing really well but mm. i wonder if it's like somewhere in the middle is probably where they'll end up maybe cutting some of the black sources and having three lorian reveals in maybe i don't know you know what i mean it's yeah because they're obviously the cutting the they all cut the four tab lands so it just leaves you with four black sources and obviously the four lorians which can mm. get the the black source as well mm -hmm. um like say maybe they have got three Lorians and put two lands back in or something, mm. but it, it it's a cool to see some changes taking place on what I would say is just a a fairly standard high tier in deck in Popper that has been pretty unchanged for a while. Mm. There is one thing that I do need to understand, and it and it's great on my head. Is there a reason why they cut the non Snowland? Over the other one, they've like got both of them have got four copies of Ice Tunnel instead of contaminated Aquifer, and like with all this Ponza and no one life probably ain't gonna matter. But oh yeah, why why <laughs> why you, why? you may as well do it the other way because <laughs> it's free. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't see a reason <laughs> that it would be split that way. I guess maybe the first guy to split it, split it that way, and everyone sort of just copied it. Yeah, but yeah, it would make more sense to split the other way and just have the four um, aquifer rather mm. than the four ice tunnel, or even I guess yeah, split it in half. But but to me, as well, you playing a bunch of five fives, you're hitting an increment of five, and if they go from twenty to gain a life with a thermocast, yeah, and go yeah, twenty one, yeah, yeah. So if anyone listening. 
has done this the one way and been thermocasting off an ice tunnel and it cost them the game, please let me know. Because I would like <laughs> to point it out. Does it have nicer art? Is that is that the reason? <laughs> I think they're both much of a much less yeah. than just a, a cave underground down that we walk through. But yeah, that's an interesting one. I never really thought about it that way. Uh, I just know I'm like, I'm sure that's a snowland. Why did the why have yeah. they put the snow why have they kept the snowland? But yeah. Yeah. Um pretty good day for, for Jess Guy Wildfire mm. um on the Sunday, uh, at, at top eight and a ninth. Um it's one of those decks that it, it doesn't really get the representation of like the amount of players. Like it's mm. very low amount of players, but it does do well quite often. Mm. Um, and you see often it's it is like there's a, it puts one in the top eight and puts one in the top sixteen, um, out of maybe like three players playing it. Um, it is yeah, it's it is a solid, solid, solid deck. Um, uh, it's absolutely miserable at first, but it's mm-hmm. a, it's a very solid deck and does well often. Yeah, and um, it's it's kind of similar to I think the thing that I like about that well, not like about it. It's quite funny to me is that this deck kind of floats around doing well like as you've said have you yeah. as you've said but it it shows that like archaeomancer ephemerate is incredibly strong but nobody cares about it because there's so much more broken things going on in the format like yeah. swift like i can't yeah. remember the last time i heard someone tell me a ban ephemerate like and it's an incredibly powerful card and an incredibly annoying engine to verse against but it just goes completely under the radar because yeah. everything else is just ridiculously I'd, powerful. i'd say an abacium ephemerate is probably the one of, if not the most powerful card in Pauper, but mm. the the shells around it just aren't as broken as yeah. the shells around other stuff that people dislike, like spells to sprites or Swiss spears. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting one. Yeah, just I guess that's I guess it did also get new toys, sort of. It's obviously got the cast into the fire as well. Pretty yeah. strong card. I'm surprised the list that came like fourth or whatever it was. Um, it's cut fire and ice as well completely, which is a, a strange one because I don't know if the card should completely replace like the fire and ice kind of slot because they do sort of different things. Like fire and ice is never dead. Like tapping a you know Richard and Paul and someone is solid. Mm. So it, it is interesting. Like I, I didn't expect it to completely replace fire and ice as well. Um, there obviously is scenarios where. You can't shock something as well with cast in the fire. You can't just hit a Swiss spear. Yeah, on. obviously fire and ice is a pretty versatile one to lose. Um, do you know if it cut any? I, I I'm not up on my um what Jessica wildfire. Do they normally run twenty lands? Um, because I'm just noticing his max on or they are max on chanceries and have two Lorien reveals as well. Um. Oh, sorry, this is the fans deck. What's it the same? Like... All, they all look the same. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're all just Arcane Monster Piles. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, I, I think they, they normally run, I think, about 20-ish lands. 21, 22 is generally where I'd put it. Oh, for Wildfire. For the Wildfire Piles, yeah. So, so fans. <laughs> um, does, does the fans deck normally run 20 lands and go max and chanceries? Mm. They go max on chanceries generally. Yeah. Um, but the twenty lands, I'm unsure. I want to say twenty one, twenty two mm. is where my my thought process. Is. Intro- obviously, chancery lets you run like a few fewer land count. Mm. Um. So Lori adding in the Lorien revealed into there. Mm. Um. Might change how that deck's mana base works as well, although it, it's a bit more on the you you sort of want basic planes, but. Um, well, yeah, they've added the uh, flood planes into the deck so they can get a blue yeah, source. Yeah, so you can get it off the Lorien. Again, why have why have they picked the Snowland? <laughs> what is going on? All, all the Snowlands in this, all the lands in this deck are snow. Yeah, I guess. Is there a? No, I don't actually think there's a reason for them to be snow other than to give Ponzo one light. Sure. Yeah, I don't think there is. I guess you could. That island sort of makes sense because you can never pretend that people are in scred, but mm. yeah, the the planes and the the pl- unless oh. it's it's maybe pretending to be tribe or whatever. Yes, Jeskai wildfire. Yeah, that's true. I guess. 
Very odd. Um, but yeah, Lorien revealed. Been pretty interesting card mm. over the both top eight. Um, it's shown it can it can change mana bases. Um, if you add it into the, to the decks that can play it. Um, this fans deck still runs three Ash Barons, but depending how I guess how this Lorien reveal played out, like they might be on the chopping block. Mm. Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. I think fans is like probably the one of the closest decks where I would consider keeping Ash Barons in because if you yeah. have Lorien reveal plus a Chancery, it's a Mulligan. Yeah, and if you have Ash yeah. Barons, Chancery, it's not. So it's like the closest deck I could kind of see where they would want to keep it, but I could definitely see them open to more Lauren reveals because the card's pretty incredibly strong and reducing mm. that. Like, it's very castable in fans as well. Um, yeah, oh, definitely. So it's pretty interesting one for sure. And then the um, the 10th place, um, Boris Synth, is sort of more in line with what we were expecting to see. It's basically the the pop again, another pop again list. Mm. Um, but yeah, just outside the top eight, and and not that much Boros being played. There was a fair bit, but not not to the levels that we would sort of have expected last mm. week. Yeah, um, I'm surprised we went from zero gardens too to one, at least one making the top eight. Was there any more in the actual? There was only two in the whole top thirty-two. Yeah. Um, one top eight and one sort of middle of the road. Seventh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there was none, none in the top 32 on Saturday and, and two in the top 32 on, on Sunday. So a pretty down week for Gardens, mm. um, which is, I guess, maybe why Terra did so well both days because Gardens nowadays is the only real edict deck that sees mm. play other than other Terra decks. Um. There's, there isn't really any mono black control anymore. It obviously pops up now and then, but never doing great things. Yeah. Um, and even things like Jun Wildfire and that aren't, again, aren't really played. No. Um, which I guess sort of leads into our comments on the meta bit. Yeah. Um, which is a, just a bit of an extra thing we've added in this episode after seeing these top eights and, and seeing how. Popper has been shaping up lately. Yeah. Um, we'd, uh, we'd definitely expected probably a lot more variance, especially given to us, like Magic Online players. This is like week one of Lord of the Rings, which is probably a, I'd say a, f a pretty powerful set in terms of Popper. There's a lot of cards that you definitely yeah. consider. Um, Obviously, Lembas cast into the fire being the strong ones, Larian revealed as well. And then you've got obviously all the cycle, the other cycle lands and uh, the cycle like spells, the one mana cyclers. Um, but I don't know if you want to take this away or. Yeah, so it was just something I was thinking about as I was uh, writing these notes for this podcast. Hmm. Um, that basically decks at the moment in Popper have become a lot more refined and well established than I would say they ever have been. Um, there's like a good range of decks, but so, for example, I would say the top decks are basically Affinity, Mono Red and Mono Blue, Terra, Ponza and Boros Synth. Mm. Um, there's a few others that some de some weeks make it in there like Fans or like Gardens, um, but aren't as consistent. Um, but these these six decks um, are basically taking up the majority of most top 32s now. Um, I think this week there was in both top 32s there was eight decks in each that weren't one of those six decks mm. um, which to me seems very low mm. from what I was used to Pauper being um, and I don't know if I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing obviously there is a meta game there and it is varied it's not like all being dominated by Affinity Mm. and nothing else is playable yeah. like the decks are swapping places each week like you see with Terra doing so well this week and and Pons are doing so well a few weeks ago um but it's just different um and it's something that I, I don't know what you would change or if something needs to be changed mm. but it's maybe something that's worth looking at um yeah for I, I think I mm. probably 
played Porter for the best part of 13 years now. Mm. And I think this is as defined, I guess, as I have seen it without the being a, this is the best deck and it beats everything. Mm. Like, there's no... I guess that is what makes it hard. There's no obvious issue. Yeah. But there's sort of a, a, a squeezing down of the decks and a condensing of what's good. Yeah, for, for me, obviously, my kind of fun and the thing that brought me to Pauper was you can basically brew anything with certain decks in mind and you could probably get away with, like, you know, doing some janky pillar pala combo. Do you know what I mean, or whatever, yeah. and you and you know you could still have fun and still win games and stuff like that. But over, I'd say the past three, four years for sure is much more noticeably. It's like that window is so far reduced to, and like if you look at any deck I play now or any deck I kind of brew is even a lack of kind of a. That's a bit of a loose term, I guess. Like all these decks are kind of a certain engine. Like, for yeah. example, Just Guy Infinity is a, a brew, but it's basically just Boros Synth and Affinity combined together because yeah. everything, Garden's a deck that really, like, a really, it's a deadly dispute engine. Like, yeah. you, you've got these powerful things that you can do, in, but you basically, you're, you kind of, like, go, oh, this is what, this is the, the off the meta deck or off the wall deck I want to play. Which engine that does well do you want to use? Strap something else together. And, I don't know what that, as as you say, like it doesn't make anything, nothing's, this is the best deck. This is, because you, you've got a very healthy rotate mate. You've got like six or seven decks that are like the top decks. And then you've got quite a lot underneath that as well. So it is healthy, but I think it's at the point where it's very stale at the moment is how it feels to me. Yeah. Uh I would agree with that. I think you sort of hit on quite a good point there where even if you just look at the the six decks I mentioned, the whole they all have a ridiculously powerful engine mm. that is sort of I want I don't want to say too powerful for Pauper, but on the very upper oh. echelons of, of what is powerful. Like mm. Affinity you have your your whole Deadly Dispute draw two engine. Mm-hmm. Mono Red obviously you've got Swift Swift Spear and, and again draw twos. Um, Mono Blue, you've got your spell stuff, sprite value. Terra, you're dumping out 5-5, five, five, so one mana. Ponza, if you've got your, your turn 1 L4 sprawl into turn 2 land destruction, your, your engine essentially stops all the other engines. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Boris Synth, like you say, with the, the Synthesizer, Core Sky for sure, Blind Hawk package. Um, they all either are really fast or can bury you with cards. Mm-hmm. Um, or can stop you doing either of those things. Which then when you look at decks um that aren't really popping up anymore, like I guess mono green stompy like elves, they don't really have that sort of level of engine to compete. Mm. Um so they just sort of get drowned out. Oh, that's what it feels like. Yeah. And it kinda leans into what I was saying to about um the Archimancer Ephemera engine. It's like it's probably the next closest thing to be in there. Yeah. That's like kind of just under with like farms with uh, just got wildfire and yeah. it's a powerful engine, but it just, when it comes together with the rest of the deck, it's just not quite as strong as the rest of the stuff. So it kind of mm-hmm. features in and out. Cause sometimes it gets there. Sometimes it doesn't. And you kind of, it just, it means that you kind of, I don't know, you, you kind of pick an engine and that, and that kind of is, tagged on to the end of it but it's mm. just still not as strong as the rest of the stuff i think it's it's just become a bit more obvious lately as well when we've seen the drop off of decks that looked really powerful mm. like um like the wildfire decks like when wildfire come out it was like hyped like mm. massively there was loads of decks seeing play loads of variations mm-hmm. now it's like occasionally someone plays one or two copies uh one or two players play just guy wildfire um, and like gates, like in both of these top 32s, there was two gates decks. Mm. And like going back, even last month, we were looking at top 32s with five or six or seven gates decks in and all different versions. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just sort of something that while writing these notes, I thought was probably worth commenting on. 
I, I don't know what's the answer. I don't know if it needs to be an answer or if it's mm. just a leave it and see. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting one for sure. Like, as you say, just you gotta, it's one thing you just gotta keep in mind while, you know, picking a deck to play at your LGS or Challenge or League or whatever, you know, that this is currently it and it's, you know, is that a good thing? Maybe. Is it, it's healthy, it definitely is healthy. I'd say percentage wise, I wouldn't say anything's too far out of the ordinary, but, um, yeah, it's definitely just something to bear in mind yeah. when you're playing. I guess another thing, that final thing, bar um, looking at these decks when you you list them all together, how many of these decks have been around forever? Like, you've got Boros, Synth, and Terra, which I'd probably claim as the newest decks. Yeah. But even still, Boros, Synth as well. such, is it's the synthesizer that's new. You've had Course Guy, Fisher, Wellspring decks for quite a while yeah yeah i think terra is obviously a, a, the biggest new new deck mm. Um i would agree Boros seems probably pretty close Um but yeah uh, affinity mono blue mono red in particular have been things since the inception of Porter. Mm. um but other than sort of either being the best deck by far none of them have ever really felt as finely tuned as they do now mm. Um, like e even the affinity decks of old, where you had to run the like five um normal artifact lands, and you were just getting gorilla shamaned out of games. Mm -hmm. Um, although they had more powerful cards with like Airtog and Disciple, they were a lot more inconsistent. Mm. Um, relying on only thought casts for your draw, and stuff like that. Um, again, mono red has has never been as powerful as it is now, mm. um, and the same with mono blue. Like mono blue used to run sh stuff like bone splitter <laughs> to try to try and get through, and now you just run eight ninjas. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, it's definitely you're right. It's it's just how it feels. Like they they are different in the sense, as you say, you've got eight ninjas, you've got really powerful lands, you've got all sorts of different stuff from affinity. You know, all these draw twos are mono red, but the essence of the deck is still the same, for sure. Yeah, the, they've all just been staple pauper decks that have just gained masses from new cards being printed. Mm. I guess it just shows like the power level of new commons are a lot higher mm. than, than pauper of old. Yeah. Um, yeah, just thought it was worth mentioning anyway. So, do you want to move on to your deck for deck choice for Saturday for highlighting? Yeah, yeah no problem. Um, I'm just going to pull it up. It was the 13th place ponza list by i think it's purgatory or one yeah. and it was a interesting one only because of new cards is kind of the reason why i highlighted it um basically it runs four generous end and one oliphant is that what it's called yeah 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 um effectively what these are these are the green and red equivalent of lorian reveal but for those who don't know it is, the generous ent is a five and a green five seven with reach that when it enters create a food token with forest cyclone one and the oliphant is a five and a red for a six four trample when it attacks another type creature you control gets plus two so and gains trample until end of turn with mountain cyclone one and what this allows the deck to do because it's cut down on lands they usually run between 18 and 19 ish it's gone to 16 lands it runs one mountain one snow cover mountain sorry one highland forest and 14 snow cover forest this allows it to basically get a green and or red source with the highland forest um while also being an actual threat that it can cascade into with bo uh, with alter so because they both cost six so yeah, yeah. so it, it is interesting because they are new cards and obviously it's a, it brings like a new dynamic to the deck um, but ultimately, I think the thing that stands out to me is if it's going to be a pro or a con overall, because the first few turns are kind of set out with Ponzi. You kind of want to hit your one drop, you want to hit your three drop, and that's it. And using one mana to do to cast these is a bit awkward. To cycle them, yeah. So yeah, to cycle them, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's it is it's cool to see, and um, mm. I like the idea. Um, obviously you get a lot more bombs into Ponza, um, which can sometimes be its undoing, where it, it like outpowers, it 
gets its good first few turns, but then doesn't draw the bonds to finish the game. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, running five more six drops that are decent, decently started, mm-hmm. um, gives you gives you that better better top deck mode. But yeah, I, I think ultimately it does make your first two turns, which are the probably the most important turns, a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still running the the full eight. Um, Bonzer effects and the um, ten one mana extra extra mana on turn two cards. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see if it sort of takes off. Definitely, and it's definitely something I'll probably end up looking trying in it. The thing that I do like about this as well, though, it to me when I see this, like I see Lauren revealed in Terra, and I kind of see it in Fams. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But when you see like Generous End, where the stats are pretty good, but if you take the Forest Cycling off it, the card's a bit medium, and you're never really gonna see it's never really gonna see Blaze yeah. just a six mana five seven. It kind of like makes you look at it and say, well, does this deserve like a thought in other decks? Like maybe not, mm-hmm. you know, like you could have Oliphant in, uh, I don't know, maybe some random deck that has mountains in. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can cut a land for this. This is. A pseudo land, but it's also a threat if you're flooded. Yeah, makes you question these things for other decks too. Yeah, there was. I, I thought his sideboard was quite interesting as well. It was only on two casting of the fires, mm. um, but still on four Gleamer, for two Gorilla Shaman, and three Cannonades. To me, I would probably just be up on four casting of the fires and then cut on those to make a bit more room. Mm. Um, but yeah, he really didn't want to die in Affinity. <laughs> with the the full eight hit cards for it, I think the uh, the thing is a lot of the decks maybe not necessarily Ponza they've went on like seven and they've had like four de glamours, three natural yeah. obsolescence and things like that. But I touched on it that casting the fire is a great card and the main reason I really like this card even in just the sideboard is it frees up sideboard space. You can yeah. you can like for a deck like this as you can see it doesn't run Penumbra Spider. It could just straight up just I don't need to run Penumbra I don't need to run Twin Silk. Anything like that, I've just got cast into fire, and then I can sh- trim on something else. Like I can easily see keeping the four glamours because hitting enchantments is pretty good, but casting the fire just lets you cut down on the cannonades, as you mentioned, cut down on yeah. the penumbras, the twin silks, and potentially even the. I I definitely easily have three cast into fires and cut a gorilla shaman. It seems free mm-hmm. enough for me, uh, easily at least three and. Um, yeah, I think especially in something like Ponza, like the downside of Gorilla Shaman is he doesn't kill the um, indestructible mm. lands. But if you cast in the fire does, and then you've got your acid mosses and thermocasts if you need to kill the other lands. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, obviously, if it was on four casting the fires, it's sort of just you straight swap four of your um, land destructions against the Finny for just four casting the fires. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a cool. It's cool to see the the one mana basic one, well, not basic land cycle. There's a one mana mountain cycle and the one mana forest cyclers. Yeah. See, getting some use, um, and and play some fairly well at thirteen. Yeah, definitely. Do you want to go to your Saturday list? Yes. Uh, so my choice was the eighteenth place, I believe. Uh, blue white gates. One of the two blue white gates that's <laughs> that's in play this weekend. Um, it's nice to see gates. I also quite like the blue black, uh, uh blue white gate. Sorry, mm. um, for how clean it was. Like basically just going straight two colors. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some interesting choices in this list. I thought, um, two quarter stars, mm-hmm. um, which is essentially like a seagate oracle, but it has vigilance. Um, it's slightly worse if you don't pay white. Um, when you cast him, you have to sacrifice him. Um, but with something um, like Basilisk Gate, having Vigilance is pretty big. Um, especially when you're against all these Cold Offer decks and, and Aggro decks, you're being allowed to attack with your main plan and then also block. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't get out race. pretty cool. One Oblivion Ring as well, over a journey. Um, I thought it was an interesting choice. I'm not entirely sure what the thinking was behind that um but it's pretty versatile card just a catch-all as well I yeah guess. 
Um, and then the other thing I thought was cool was that it run two four spikes. Mm. Um, I don't know how good they're going to be in a deck with a bunch of tap lands. Because um, ideally you want them on turn one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, interested in Clue. Yeah. Um, I versed this guy on my first league back as well, this exact list. Um, oh, cool. Pretty, pretty interesting deck. Like he, he, I got four spiked round one, first <laughs> of all. I wasn't playing round four spike. I seen the quarters arm, I was like, that's oh, pretty sweet. Um, I I got... th- yeah, I guess that's a big thing. Like, you're not playing round four spike against yeah, kids. No. Like, just, it's just it's not. <laughs> um, I got Palace Sentinel to death as well. That was a yeah. big one. That Because there's no Guardians either. Just straight up, just Palace Sentinels. Yeah. And uh, I did get... I got Oblivion Ring, but it wasn't a creature, so it didn't really matter. Yeah. I can't remember where I was playing. I think I was playing Gardens, actually. So, I suppose the the Palace Sentinels, especially against Gardens, being able to take the Monarch off you hmm. without having to like have a guy in play a turn is pretty yeah. cool. Um, and yeah, Cortis are only a two of, hmm. um, but it seems like a cool include. It seems like it will play pretty well. Um, I think it actually sees one more card than Seagate as well. Uh, um, yeah, it sees just... three yeah. instead of two. Um, yeah. Yeah. The sideboard you... is pretty standard. There's nothing amazing in there. Um, there's no cast into the fires because they are just on four dust to dust. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess if you're that heavy on, you want four dust to dust, you don't really need the cast into the fires as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess it wouldn't free up that much space. They've got one. Swirling Sandstorm, which is probably more against Terra than um, Fear, and then one Electricery. Yeah, I'm surprised there's no no cast in the fires, to be fair. Uh, especially mm-hmm. with Electricery in there, and the Smash to Dust in the in the main. So, interesting yeah. choices that they've, they've chose those specific cards, like why keep Electricery and then cast it, uh, Smash to Dust, I guess. I, I suppose, I guess the the main one is a smash to dust in the main. Mm. I would question whether that should be a cast instead. Mm. Um, the, yeah, the electric, like, like you said, is probably more of a Bogles or um, White Weenie Hedge because mm. it clears so much more. Yeah, but definitely interesting for sure. Yeah. The sweet deck. Uh, would you like to move on to Sunday? Have you got. Yeah, yeah, go for it. You, you may as well start with yours. So we have the 22nd place. 22nd, I think it was, yeah. Just scrolling down to it now. <laughs> 22nd place by Paula Robin. Uh, playing like a blue-red fear is, I guess, the best way I can describe it. But it runs um, for Larian Revealed. And also runs two Telerian Terrors, they're like the top end. With also two cast into the fire main too. So it got quite a lot of newish toys to mess around with like i have seen telerian terror in blue red as a one or a two of to kind of hedge at some sort of end game but um yeah it's it's it definitely gets a lot better here and also you've got the lauren reveal which gets you the um fjords too which is mm. quite nice so it just straight up replaces ash Barons in my eyes um but they chose to keep two in so but yeah, definitely a sweet deck. Uh, sweet take on it too. Uh, got a one of Smoke Shroud, which is another interesting one. Yeah, it's, I, I thought that was a pretty odd one to include, mm. especially when it's only on the four deep hours. Like, there's no... Um, moon Circuits. Moon Circuit Hackers. Um, so you don't get that much value out of it. Mm. And it's not like you really need the evasion. Mm-hmm. Um, because you've got the removal, you've got the bolts, you've got the screds, so you can get through any like random docks on the ground. Um, but yeah, it's cool, cool to see the the Telerian Terror Lorien revealed sort of package. Um, even if it is only two Terrors going in a blue red fair, yeah. Um, it does seem like a deck that can utilize that pretty well. Um, Lord of the Rings wise again, a couple of cast into the fires in the main, mm-hmm. uh, and another in the side. Um, as well as the four Lorien Revealed, so pretty well represented. 
yeah, definitely. Um, that, that's the main reason why I picked it. New toys, new exciting things to look at. Yeah, yeah definitely. But over, it is, it's sweet. But it's, uh, it's definitely just a nice take on uh, Blue Red Fair. Um, nice to see the Lorien reveal just even appear in anyway. It's quite an interesting one, to be fair, because it's, as I say, it's just a five mana draw three. Um, so it's pretty interesting, anyways. And it's also a pseudo Ash Barons, especially with Terra. So definitely a sweet one. Uh, anything else to mention on it? Or... No, no, that's that's fine from me. Um, my choice was the um, Cold Author deck. Um, the top eight, and I believe it was FER MTG or Fur MTG. Mm. Um, it was sort of the same list as the one that I believe top 16 on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, came 12th on Saturday. Um, which was uh, Lucas G1 GG's. Um, but it was a cool sort of different take on Kuldorfer. Um, running a couple of improvised clubs in the main as well as four blast runners to get the benefit from sacking mm -hmm. sacking something. Um, it's still on the eight draw twos, which, as I said previously, I think is probably too many. But it's cool to see the sort of blast runner engine getting a bit of a bonus with improvised club. Um, interestingly, there was no no lava darts and no fire blast. Mm -hmm. Um, so the the club will be carrying a lot of the the blast runner activation, but you still have the implements and and sims and cold offers, um, as well as the the blood tokens from Epicure. So it's not the worst, um, and you, I don't think it runs any galvanic blasts either. So you, you don't have to hold the artifacts as much. You can just sack them as for your blast runner activation every turn. Mm. And not really worry about missing out on your your battle blast value. Yeah, it is an interesting one because I kind of when I seen this card, it and to me it sort of still does. It kind of just looks like a pseudo trap to me. So like the card That's itself, an improvised club. Yeah, it, it's an interesting because you look at it and thinking, well, like this deck, this deck as you mentioned doesn't run fire blast, it doesn't run Galf blast. So then, to me, is it not just would you not just be better just running like fire blast here? For the most part, but especially with it, like it might be, it might come up better in some certain scenarios. But I think overall, you're probably just better with a free four damage. Yeah, I think for me, I would probably on one fire blast. Like mm. the f the first fire blast is better than the first improvised club. Mm -hmm. But then subsequent improvised clubs are much better than subsequent fire blasts. Mm. Um, especially if you're on this sort of blast runner plan, you want to be like if you go turn one blast runner, turn turn two, play some um, artifacts or or cold offers and attack. Turn three, you sort of you don't want to be fire blasting, hmm. but you do want to be activating your blast runner. So you could turn three like club the guy or or club them, flinging a token and get your blast runner activation. Hmm. Um. So like these the early turns, the improvised clubs are much better. I think the, obviously late game the fire fire blasts are just so strong, mm. especially with the eight impulses, um, because you pull out all your lands. It, it's unfortunate if you hit the one fire blast with one of those, but um, you hit a lot more land drops. Yeah, that's but yeah, I, I, I can see. It. I I would like probably one fire blast in this list, mm. um, but I do think the club has quite a big upside, um, just being it, yeah, being able to play it so early. Yeah. Um. And sort of not have to worry about it too much. Where fire blast, it's sort of a a last. last yeah, it's all, you always wanted to be your your last kind of like your last spell almost. Yeah. But you do. My only thing is like with especially with eight impulses, it's very rare you don't have anything to do between like the mid game like three and five because you're just going I'll turn yeah. two, I'll turn two, I'll turn two, I'll turn two. Yeah, and it's true. just and and that's just where after like you like. Galf Blast, I agree, you you don't want to be worrying about your artifact count, but you also do have more windows to cast it before you start sh sacrificing your artifacts. And then Fire Blast, it's free, where Improvised Club, to me, just looks like it's like in this weird spot where maybe two mana might be too much with all these impulses and Ren's Resolves, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's kind of where I look at it. I'm like, well, you know what I mean? Like, how many times have you... You, would you look at the improvised come you know, I'm glad it was this particular card 
Yeah. And that, that, that's my only thought about it. He's just, it's two mana seems like just that little bit too much. But I do know what you mean. Like the, the actual cost of it is definitely a lot lower than, than Fire Blast in particular and also yeah. Galve Blast to an extent. Because three three artifacts seem like too much for Galve Blast. Um, obviously, where Improvise could be only the one. Um, but Fire Blast is... I don't know. I, I definitely think I would at least be on, as you say, at least one Fire Blast. Maybe even two. Because just the, the potential of just... Especially with the eight range resolves, you're just drawing through all your land anyways. So mm-hmm. throwing one Fire Blast out there, you'll probably still have 17 lands in play anyways. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think looking at this, the, the sort of room for the Fire Blast, though, would probably be the render resolves or the impulses. Mm. Um, just because, well, you don't you don't want to cut any of your creatures. You don't want to cut your artifacts. You're already on pretty much min lands. You're not cutting Lightning Bolt. And then you sort of... and, and the, I guess you could cut a Chain Lightning, but it's it, for, for Lightning Bolt, for Chain Lightning is pretty necessary without Galv Blast, I would say. Mm. Yeah, I was more meaning um, replacing the club itself, though. Like uh, I would say, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm thinking. Like that that particular two of slot is probably where it, it you would probably look to me. Even two Galv Blast might even be better, just because it got one. But again, you'd have I to. I think you just this. lose that value on the Blast Runner. Mm. From from looking at it, I haven't played this yet. I am gonna try this list because it seems pretty sweet. Um, but yeah. I, I could see it. I could see it going both ways. Um, I do like Improvised Club. I think it's a cool card. Mm. Um, obviously, Shrapnel Blast would be nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is sort of like a slightly tamer Shrapnel Blast, but it's easier to, to activate. Yeah. Um, I... Being able to sack just any creature. I think the one damage definitely would make the difference. Like, looking at it as a Shrapnel Blast, you're just like, okay, this is definitely, oh, yeah. you know, it's a quarter of a life total from no question whatsoever. But there's yeah. quite a lot of artifact based or even red based burn spells that deal four. And then it's like obviously as I say, the Gal Blast and Fire Blast and then this. You're kind of competing for the same slot. So it'll be definitely in, like and I'm not writing it off completely, but that's mm. just when I first look at this card, I look at it, I think you've got a lot of tubes already, you've got a lot of four damage spells, and especially this list is omitting the other two options. It's like, is that really the best one you have access to out of the yeah. three? I think Lava Dart as well should probably mm. be con- yeah, considered with alongside Fire Blast um, just because it can activate the Blast Runner, it double triggers your Swiss Spear, mm. and it's a pretty low cost sacrifice. Like the worst part about the Fire Blast is that the sacrifice is quite large, but like one land you, you can sort of get rid of here and there. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it was pretty cool. The sideboard as well. Um, obviously, put your back on um, cast into the fire, freeing up space. Um, you just run straight for casting the fires. Doesn't bother about end the festivities, so you free up like three sideboard slots. Mm. Um, so you can run things like flame slash, um, an extra gorilla charm. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty nice to be able to do that. Like, that's biggest biggest reason I'm high, so high on casting the fire is just not even because it's obviously a powerful card. It's just sideboard cards have been banned in Papa for the best part of two years here. So a card that frees up sideboard slots is I am all for. It's secret power is you get plus two to your sideboard. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but but yeah, that's that's it for, for me on that deck. Yeah, and I'm pretty much at the same. So do you want to move on to our expectations? Yeah. Um, yeah, so expectations for next week. My first one um, was just more, I would like to see more utilisation of the Lord of the Rings cards. Yeah. Mm. Um, Particularly Lembus, I think, was pretty underused this week. Obviously, with the, the domination of Terra yeah. and Cast Into the Fires just goes in a bunch of sideboards. Mm-hmm. Um, those, like Lorien and Cast, have been pretty heavily played. The other one that was probably sim- similar tier to Cast for Hype was Lembus. Mm. Um, but I think there was only around five decks in each top 32 playing it and they were on they weren't on like stacked on fours, so they were like up one here and there, mm-hmm. three, two. Um so I think mine will be that I guess Lord of the Rings cards will keep cropping up from now. Um hopefully Lembus sees a bit more play. Like Club as well. Um we're seeing a couple of copies in that Monored deck, mm-hmm. but it'd be cool to see some more. Yeah, definitely. Definitely like the uh 
the Lord of the Rings fans, I'm definitely happy to see more. Especially, I'd like, I guess, on the back of yours, I guess I would like to see more of the cyclers. That'd be nice, especially yeah. people utilising those, because I'm uh, a lot more hyped on those than I thought I would be after seeing a lot of these decks and a lot of people messing with them. So it'll be definitely cool to see. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, Mines, I would like to see, or it'd be interesting to see, if there's any more anti Ponza tech. So I've been r- running a couple of leagues and I've seen the likes of, say, Parallax for, for one, I'm sure it was, and a couple of us playing some random anti Ponza tech in mm. the in like different decks. Mainly in like farms was, was one of the big ones. There was um and like out of Monster Tron, things like that, where they're running just like bridges in the main. So FAMS was running four Evolver Wilds instead of like Ash Barons or whatever. So, you, oh, okay. so, so you, you can play it and then get it when you yeah. need it rather than having to stick the land. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then raise the tie bridges, the blue white bridge, just so you obviously don't get pondered. So it'd be really interesting mm-hmm. to see if like more decks utilize those sort of anti ponzer things. More because I would like ponzer to take a down tick because it is <laughs> not because it's unfun, but it's like it's been like three or four weeks. It's been definitely one of the most popular decks, and it just keep popping up. And it's just come on, give someone else I- a go. Yeah, I think that's something we didn't really touch on before, but the Saturday, obviously, the, there wasn't um, any amazing results from Ponza this week, mm. um, Saturday or Sunday. I think the closest was, was it 10th on Saturday? Um, but on the Saturday, Ponza was by far the most played deck. Yeah. Um, like, ahead, way ahead of everything. Um, so, yeah, I, I can see why you were... <laughs> expect to see more anti-Ponza tech because everyone yeah. is just playing against Ponza quite a lot. Yeah, I think it was, I think, was it uh, 20% did um, Adapto put up? It was like 20% of the field it, or something? It was, it, yeah, it was pretty high. So, I think I have it here. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can find it while you continue. Yeah, so that's a, that's a bit mental to be fair. So I definitely hope that it would be you know, it's o- other things like, I know it sounds true, but just Evolver Miles is a fine option because it just allows you to hold the land until end of turn so yeah. they can't colour screw you so interesting to see yeah it, it was it was 20 percent, and the next most popular was boris synth and burn which were both tied for 16 percent. yeah so there was a lot of ponza yeah although it didn't convert particularly well <laughs> um yeah so my next um i guess it's more of a hope than an expectation mm-hmm. at this point um is to see a bit more variation from the top six decks um, that I mentioned before, being Mono Blue, Affinity, Mono Red, um, Ponza, Boros, and Terra. Mm. Um, it would be nice to see a bit more of a mix of, of new decks or different decks making the top 32 of these challenges. Yeah. Um, I don't really have one, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. As I think I'll last one. <laughs> for my last one, so there was nothing really interesting or exciting um i did see a poison storm on one of the challenges yeah. which was a, a pretty different one as well so i guess i'm gonna go back to let's hope we have poison storm next week yeah that's it you didn't even cover it this week it was there no, you didn't cover it no i expected to run the uh larian reveal to be honest i'm not gonna lie so the fact they didn't i just rejected it completely <laughs> so anything else to cover that's it from me for this week so yeah if you've enjoyed this podcast please if you can hit the if you're on youtube hit the like if you're on any of the podcast players please hit the follow button it'd be really appreciated really helps obviously with like the algorithms and things and just let if you're really enjoying this podcast just, just let your friends know just post about it. go to go to the top of the hill and scream how much you love Catholic <laughs> Commons because it is a fantastic podcast i'm a bit biased but so yeah, it'd just be great because this community is great and it'd be great if obviously we can just share that with everyone. So it'd be really appreciated. Um, but yeah, that is all from us at Cast and Commons. Until next time, and don't forget to stay hydrated. Bye.